Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Jesus reminds us to watch for the signs of his return. Today, we will explore further what we are seeing in our times that line up with what signs he said would indicate the potential of the end and his return. We will also discuss the practical meaning of this as we watch and as a remnant, prepare as he so leads. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, Here we are on uh, Good Times Friday. Uh, This is going to be airing in uh, June. We're a little bit of taping a little bit ahead of that, so maybe (laughs) about the time. By the time this airs, uh, the world will have completely changed. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> uh, and uh, we won't be able to report it until later. <laughs> um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing when you think of the speed. Um, and what I call, you know, things are happening in lightning speed. Um, mm-hmm. That change and dynamics and culture and economics. And, you know, we'll talk about, you know, computers and artificial intelligence. Um, it's happening at lightning speed. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it's dramatic. So um, if you think, um, you know, the culture, um, and, you know, even when your kids, think about when your kids were growing up. Because uh, right. your, your kids are now uh, either married or in college. My kids have all been married, and I've got grandkids. Right. <laughs> Linda and I already have grandkids that have have, have gone through college. Right. And, and <laughs> enter in college, you know, and and uh, mm-hmm. they'll they, if they get married, we could easily have great grandkids. Yeah. You know, right. Right. Like but when our kids were growing up, um, and your kids were growing up, which is only now. 20, 25, 30 years ago, That's, and it's not that long. Uh, would you have imagined that that what you watch on television, that the the public schools would be having a transgender reading stories to, to first graders mm-hmm. um, as a normal part of, of activity? There's even... Interesting enough, and this is this is sad to me, uh, awful sad to me. Uh, there's churches, uh, this is in the United States and around the world, that are doing the same thing for their uh, Sunday school kids. Mm. Um, and uh, and this is this is shocking. Um, but uh, a this is a Catholic church, uh, and this by the way has nothing to do with the Catholic Church per se. So. It's just, it could, and there's lots of churches that are doing this, but it just it just so happens to be a Catholic church that has um, brought in a exhibit and a big, um, uh, basically, uh, communication program that um, says that Jesus was transgender. Wow. Um, and... And then and trying to demonstrate wow. it and trying to put it, <laughs> put it forward as, uh, you know, Jesus was transgender. And um, it's heresy, you know, but it's it's becoming common. So could you imagine, could you have imagined back then that that's the way public school would be? Uh, mm-hmm. in, in churches would be, we, we can't imagine that. Right. And so when you think about it's happening in our lifetime and now accelerating, um, it's happening in light and speed so that the movement of change mm-hmm. is now accelerating all by itself, which means change is going to get more frequent and more, and I believe more dramatic mm-hmm. because of the ability to do it. Um, you know, and like um, the percentage of different groups that even say there's, there's uh, the normal uh, way of, of uh, operating uh, you know, five, 10 years ago would be your male and female. Mm-hmm. Well, now the younger generation, something like 30, 40% of them say, no, 
you can choose your you can choose your gender. Right. <laughs> Which I still don't get that, you know, because you really can't. <laughs> Mm. you really are but this is part of just the confusion and the chaos that the enemy weaves and the lies that he tells that um, are causing people to truly struggle with their identity they don't know who god created them to be and and without god it doesn't make sense to them you yeah. know yeah and it's a, it's and very it's a, sad it is sad and it's a uh it's a it's a difficult place uh for us believers because um um when we look at the influence of that cultural shift and it's basically, you know, what God calls an abomination, mm -hmm. um, our thought is, well, we got to eliminate that. We got to try to stop it. We got to try to, over, you know, change it. Mm -hmm. um, well, the trick or the difficulty with it is, is that culturally, yes. And is there a program behind it? Yeah. I mean, this purposeful, there's, there's people that are super skilled at knowing how to communicate it. So, for example, um, a strategy of a of transgender groups is I want to get it into the grade school mm -hmm. and get them used to functioning so that they can choose and they'll choose the opposite sex and that's and they consider that a good thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's awful, and that's terrible, and that shouldn't be, and, and we're against it. But when you look at the life of Christ, with all of that difficulty, he still loves that person. Absolutely. And, and says, I'm, I, I would like to invite you, and by the way, this mm -hmm. is true universally, to come and know who I am mm -hmm. um, and walk with me and let me guide you and lead you into the very, very best, which I can help you see truth. Right. And I'll help you process the truth so that you embrace the truth. We don't have to force somebody to the truth. Right. Really, we need to bring them, you know, introduce them to Jesus. We have He'll to lead them to the truth. To Jesus. <laughs> um, and so we got to be careful. And that's where this tricky thing is, is that... Um, we're called not to have judgment because that's mm -hmm. not our role in any, in any way. Right. Um, it's, it's to say, I might disagree with you. I think this isn't right. The invitation is always, would you be willing to process that with me? Mm -hmm. And by the way, um, anytime I do that personally, the standard and the truth basis is, is God himself and the scriptures. Right. Because all the scriptures are true and it lays out the truth. And really all I have to do is say, would you come and be willing to process that with me? Now you have to make your own conclusions about that. Mm -hmm. But let's go look at the truth. God is truth and the scriptures are truth. Would you be willing to? Now, for an unbeliever, that's pretty hard to do um, for them to say yes, because they don't think it's true in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, well, why would I want to go there? I don't think your truth is any different than my truth. Okay. Um, all right. Well, well, I would appeal. And what I do is appeal to them on a different level to say, okay, all right, sure. I can, I can, I can appreciate that. Um, tell me about your life. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening in your life? Are you at peace? Are you having good things happen to you? Are you, are you joyful? And I can tell you universally, that the unbelievers that I've been exposed to, and by the way, um, even what I call wealthy believers who have their faith in money, mm -hmm. that you would think, well, they're going to be fine because they got plenty of money. Interesting enough, they don't. Um, because why? Well, when you're not with God, there's going to be heaviness, difficulty, stress, conflict. Why? Everybody's surrounded by self-centered people. Everybody's mm -hmm. surrounded by entropy, you know, the world falling apart because of, of Satan's control. And so I just say, okay, well, let me appeal to you on a different level. Um, would you like to learn that you could, you could be at peace? You could have freedom. You could have mm -hmm. joy. Um, wouldn't you like to learn that? And if they say no, then I, there's really nothing more for me to do. But if they say, well, I kind of would. Okay, well, let me, let me walk you into some things for you to look at 
you can decide anytime that it's not valuable to you, but uh, let me share with you, I can give testimony, I can bear witness to things that have happened for me mm-hmm. um, and others. I can bring others in. Hey, Kathy, would you talk to this person? Because you could share with them not even any shoulds or shouldn'ts. It's just, well, this is how my life is. Um, right, bear right. witness you know, to God and then uh, let me share with you that. But the heart isn't to bring judgment um, or to uh, come against them. It's rather to invite them Mm-hmm. To, the, to the life of God. Um, and then as you think about that deeper and deeper and deeper, um, that's going to separate the remnant from not being the remnant. And, and what I'm talking mm-hmm. about there is just like with Jeremiah, when he was talking to the nation of Israel. So you could, you could look at that as saying he was talking to all the children of God. Right. Uh, they weren't, it wasn't fuzzy that they were, they were children of God. But they were, they were falling away from God. Mm-hmm. And God says, well, because of that, my heart and truth is you have to follow me and you're not following me. So you're going to have some consequences to that. And there's going to be judgment. Uh, repent. And mm-hmm. repent is really, for us, it's super simple. Um, it's just, you know what? I think I'll just go with you. I don't have to yep. do anything. I don't have to fix anything. I don't even have to change my mind. Turn around and go with you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, if I'm struggling, you know, say if I, if I, and I've invited, I've had this with homosexuals uh, where uh, they're struggling. I said, oh, okay, um, well, let's just go walk with God. He'll, he'll, he'll process it with me. Um, yeah. I'm not going to, I don't have any judgment, um, but let's go process that with God. And so uh, that's what he does. But the remnant is, well, because you're not following me, and you rejected me and didn't repent, now appeal to the remnant to say, even though the consequences of the world are still going to be there, uh, particularly in Israel, you're going to be judged and and conquered by Nebuchadnezzar, you can still live the life of the remnant, which will still be grand in a difficult place. Mm -hmm. And that is, yeah, you're going to get captured. You're going to Babylon. You're not going to have the temple. You're not going to have all these festivals. You're not going to have the same fellowship. All this stuff's going to change. But guess what? I can still give you a covenant line. Right. And I'm still a God of abundance. Yeah. So the invitation, which is what we're, you and I are making about the same time, is um, are, we, are, are do we watch? And we're going to talk more about that. Uh, yes. Um, does it, are we for sure know it's going to happen in our lifetime? No. No. Um, I can't say that. <laughs> and again, it's really simple. Well, we can say it's accelerating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the reason I can I can say it in a simple uh, that, no, I don't know, is that Jesus said nobody knows. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't think you do. Watch. By the way, it's going to happen. There'll be a time mm-hmm. when it's going to happen. We can see things accelerating like, huh. Um, we can see today more how it's possible than not. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, is it going to happen? But we're you and I are appealing to the remnant to and it's strictly a simple do you have a heart to follow god and particularly mm-hmm. as we talk about this ai uh, it's to actually go deeper into the relationship it's deeper mm-hmm. into hearing him guide lead direct give discernment give wisdom and not rely on anything else mm-hmm. including my own think- thinking and particularly as it relates to ai which i think is going to happen is people will actually stop even relying on their own thinking. Mm -hmm. Uh, They'll just say, well, that knows better than me. I'll just follow that. Um, And God says, well, you're going to miss an important point. And that's follow me. And and the way you follow me is in dialogue. And we went through a whole series on prayer. It's just, you know, just keep talking to me and I'll guide you. And by the way, it's what? Slow and Mm step-by-step and it's revelation and it's understanding, discernment. It's not going to be an instantaneous answer, which by the way, is why a lot of people struggle uh, with even following God because I need an answer. Right. And God says, well, walk with me and I'll give it to you. But yeah, right. no, I want it right now. And yeah. And that and has in has as technology has changed, we have gotten even less patient with waiting for an answer you know, <laughs> yeah. because it is so instantaneous most of the time. That's it. That's it. Um, so that um, with the remnant, our call to the remnant is, uh, it's not what, it's not any judgment to it. It's rather invitation to learn 
to uh, be in the kingdom, to walk with God, to uh, surrender your will, hear his will, enjoy his will, Mm -hmm. know that he'll deliver his will. And that um, it's a beautiful opportunity to learn to follow him instead of of something else, uh, which is what we're trying to say. And uh, then we talked last time a little bit about artificial intelligence that's accelerating. Uh, And by the Mm -hmm. way, that... um, uh, there's now uh, apps that you can even buy that can do a variety of things. Like <laughs> when they yeah, the kids of, all know about them. <laughs> yeah, think about a um, uh, college right now. Mm-hmm. They are super afraid of AI because right. guess what? You know, and, and you did, I did, my kids do, my grandkids do. They got to write papers. Right. Well, guess who can write it better? Right. Well, and they're already, you can see people already capitalizing on beginning to develop apps that help teachers figure out what was done by AI and what was done by a person, you know, so (laughs) it's crazy what they have to deal with for sure. AI is going to talk about other AIs. (laughs) Yeah. It's really, really interesting. Um, So anyway, we'll talk, we're going to, you know, talk more about this because this is a big deal and it's going to get more prevalent because it's accelerating and now the application of it is now is now public. Mm-hmm. So and that's what's happened over the last month is these these apps have now become available and usable. And right. inter- interesting enough, remember one of the strengths of AI, and of course a, a, a fear, is that it learns. Right. And so these apps are going to get better and better and better and better and better. And by the way, build other apps. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it'll, it'll, it'll compound itself, you know, so we'll, we'll talk more about that. But it, the one thing we want to keep reiterating is that as this is moving forward, uh, we as believers have to remain in the spot of faith. Mm-hmm. And that's hearing God's voice, processing God's voice, understanding his will. Do mm-hmm. I believe his will? Um, do I experience his will? And there, and there, it doesn't matter the speed at which life is going forward. God's right. pace, pie, God's pace is never at that pace. Right. Um, which is a frustration, but a, but a joy because he said, trust me. And actually, um, it's going to be enjoyable, you know, if you go that way. So we'll, we'll talk more about that. Well, last time we were in uh, Matthew 25, uh, talking about faithful. Um, so go ahead and uh, we, we talked about the story where, he gave him five and then two. So go ahead and read. Um, this is in chapter 25. Uh, read verses uh, 21 through 23. It's starting with his statement to the, to the one that had five the most. Mm-hmm. And he, he did, uh, he was uh, fruitful in that five. But this is what God said in verse 21 mm-hmm. and then 22, 23. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Yeah. Um, So uh, he says, you know, well done. Mm-hmm. Um, I am pleased, and he's pleased with what? That he was what? That he was faithful. Faithful. Um, I'm. I, God says I'm pleased that you're faithful. And mm-hmm. think of just simple uh, definition of that. What would God consider to be faithful? Just truly doing what he's asked, you know, honoring him with what, what he's, what you've been given. Yeah. Is that, um, uh, and remember because of the, uh, presence of God within us, the Holy spirit, and we walking in the kingdom at the purest level, being faithful is being in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. That's why he, that's why he sets the whole thing up and says the kingdom Mm -hmm. of God is like, right. Faithfulness is being in the kingdom of God. Yeah, just walking with him, staying with him. And as he leads, you're following, you're being yeah. obedient, you're receiving what he says, you're seeking what he says. Yeah. Yeah. So he's not saying, you know, just be obedient blindly. 
and mm-hmm. perform. Uh, by the way, David says this in Psalm 40 a little bit differently. He says, and I know you've set up the system of sacrifice and offering, and, and there's a reason for that. And, and he said, I need to understand it, and I do follow it. But he said, what you're really looking for is heart. Mm-hmm. What's my heart? Do I desire to follow God's will? Right. That's really what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't have to be perfect at the sacrifice. I just have to be good at following you by being with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and God says, I'll work both sides of the deal. When you're struggling being obedient, which I know you will right. be, stay with me and I'll give you the power to be obedient. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I'll show you why it's beneficial. <laughs> and then you'll see it's beneficial. And you say, well, right. I think I'll just keep doing this. You know, And so... Uh, faithfulness at the pure level is uh, I'm walking with him um, in the kingdom and I faithfully stay there. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, now think about what draws me out of that and not being faithful. Mostly self. Self. Um, And it says in James chapter one, verse 12, um, God doesn't tempt. He's not Mm -hmm. saying, well, yeah, I'm going to cause you to, to exit, but rather... It says the enemy appeals to your selfishness Mm -hmm. and you decide to exit and walk away from God, the relationship with God. Um, And now you're outside the kingdom and then it turns to, that's what it says, it turns to sin. Mm -hmm. Sin being away from God, you're not of God. And so um, faithfulness is is constantly, uh, and that's why it says daily, deny self, take up the cross mm-hmm. and follow me. It's that following me stuff that's faithful. Right, well, right. How, well, I got to deny self, understand what you've done for me to give me the privilege of being with you and now I'll be with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, then, and then I'm going to ask you in the kingdom with certain instruction. Here's my instruction for what? A specific assignment that I'm asking you to do right now or a step to take or something, mm-hmm. you know, to do. Um, uh, I think I shared this uh, in a different uh, broad uh, podcast, but um, there was a couple that was, you know, uh, talking about their son and um, uh, the struggle they were having with the teenager, which is normal. <laughs> right. Um, and God gave them, um, you know, here, uh, yes, we're going to together uh, walk, have your son, you know, walk with you, walk with me. And I have certain instructions for you Mm -hmm. of what you are to do to put yourself in the right spot for me to function so that your son follows me. Uh, Right. Well, faithfulness is, is a two, think of two simple levels. One that I heard what God said. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay. Now think about this. How can you, how and where can you hear what God says? Being with him. Being with him. You yeah. got to be with him and then understand that he's speaking and I got to have the ability to hear, which he said, I'll give you that ability. Um, so you got to be with me and hear me. And then um, as I give you instruction that you are willing to follow that instruction. And even when you're struggling with that instruction, you stay with me and I'll give you the power and the fortitude and the courage and the understanding to, to be obedient mm-hmm. to that. Why? Right. Because it's best and none better. Uh, it's going to be spectacular. Uh, and he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Uh, you have been faithful over what? Mm. Small over a things. few things. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's, it's not about, uh, and, and, and then I want to, I want to point out something. He said that to the five, right? To the person mm-hmm. that had five. What did he say to the person that had two? Same thing. Oh, the same thing. Wait a minute. But the five is more. Doesn't no. matter. <laughs> no. See, it's it's your instruction. Mm-hmm. Um, what he you, has entrusted you, to you and, 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 and your see, instruction. Yeah. The reason he calls it small is that it's a step. Mm-hmm. It's simple. Um, I'm not, he didn't say, you know, I'll see you in five years when you've got all this figured out. Mm-hmm. it's here's my instruction today to you that's personal and it may have a bigger quote magnitude than somebody next to you 
Mm -hmm. But it's no different than the one next to you because it's the same thing. It's my instruction to you. Take the step. And by the way, he called both of them small. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because it's just a step. Um, Well, and I think even as you think about that, him calling both of them small and like you're saying, it just being a step, we need to recognize the beauty and the freedom in what that means for us. I mean, he fully recognizes that in order for us to walk in faith with him, he needs to take a step by step and he will build our faith and he will start us with small things so that we learn his faithfulness and we choose to be faithful. And that continues to grow as we, as we grow in our time with him. And so I think it's a beautiful picture of that, even that in all ways he recognizes, you know, he speaks to us the way we listen. And just like toddlers, he wants to grow us in our faith step by step by step and grow us in our faithfulness. And he will work both sides of the equation. He will prove himself to be faithful and which encourages us to step in and be more faithful. Right. Exactly. Um, And then when you think of um, this follows the statement, be watchful Mm -hmm. uh, because you don't know when it's all going to happen. And um, so uh, let's just set up. So let's set this up for next time. But um, since he gave that instruction, Mm -hmm. then what are we to be faithful to? To watching. To be watching. I mean, that was the last (laughs) instruction he gave there right before it was to watch. Yeah. Is to be watching. And we need to pursue that further than in terms of, well, one of the things that we're supposed to be faithful to, and, gen- and remember, he's trying to lay this uh, the truth out in general, is that your faithfulness is to my instruction for you personally mm-hmm. at the moment I give it. Um, and by the right. way, it's just going to be a few. It's going to be small because it's not gigantic in complexity. It's kind of simple. Mm-hmm. If you follow me, leading to can, it can be leading to very complex things. But I'll take you know God says I'll take care of that. But being watchful is one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, And he actually says that universally as that I'm telling everybody, while you're doing these other things that I'm asking you to do, there is another element. I'm interesting enough. And we'll we'll talk about this. (laughs) I don't want this to become your primary instruction. It's kind Mm. of interesting Uh, because you can, if you get, if you become obsessed by it, right. By definition, what, what does that mean? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss any other instruction. Mm. So he says, I'm not, I'm not asking you to make this primary. I'm not asking you to obsess about this. I'm not asking you to do only this and that's it. But I am, mm-hmm. telling, I am telling you, as part of everybody's instruction, be watchful. Mm, that's and, good. And so we that's have to understand, I, and here's a question we're going to set up for next time, is that, Okay, be watchful is is one of his instructions. We are to be faithful to that instruction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why? Because remember, it's been given to everybody ever since 2,000 years ago. Right. So they are all supposed to be watchful. We're supposed to be watchful. Mm -hmm. In light of maybe it doesn't happen in our lifetime. So if it doesn't happen in our lifetime, then what the heck would it even matter to be watchful? Right. Well, there's something about that. Um, and what are we to be watchful for? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and, and why? And I think this will drive us deeper into uh, being watchful, but it also help us understand to be open to willing and willing to receive instruction as God so directs us. And, and just look at it, you know, forget about the end per se. Mm-hmm. The world is getting so strange and so convoluted right. and so uh, variable that we need to just be watchful and receive an instruction now more than ever. Right. Because uh, we can't rely on anything being the same anymore. Uh, just like for me, you know, I've, I've been watching AI. Mm-hmm. I've been watching it. I've just been, paying I, attention. Know, it, it, yeah. hasn't, it hasn't been a big thing. I've just been watching. And I, I kind of knew. I knew where it was going to go because uh, I could see it. I could read it. I could understand it, But I know what it is. Well, I, I really have been overwhelmed by, here it is. Mm-hmm. Hey, here it is. It's not, it's not development anymore. It's here. 
Mm-hmm. Guess what? It's going to accelerate dramatically. Mm. Well, I need to watch what the heck does that mean? Um, and how do I handle that? What do you want me to do with that? By the way, out of the context of, hey, Rich, I did tell you one thing. It's going to diminish faith. Mm. I'm asking you, son, go the other direction. Right. Um, That's good. That's um, a good word. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Mm-hmm. But I need you to go the other direction when everyone's going that direction. And it's going to be easy to go that direction. You know? And so, mm-hmm. okay, well, if I'm watching for it, see, it has implication right. to life and the things that are happening in life that that's I, that's why I think he wants us to be watchful so we'll we'll talk more about that next time so we'll we'll uh, process further uh, this discussion of faithfulness and uh, what that means and particularly as it relates to the instruction is be watchful which is mm-hmm. which is a big big uh, concept and a big word so father we thank you for helping us understand a little bit of this um, we uh, we don't uh, fully Uh, comprehend all of it. We do know that there's a wonderful truth here for us to receive and to pay attention to and why it's so important to pay attention to. I pray that all of us would uh, would be in a place where you would say, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over these few things, over these small things. Enter into my joy. And I believe that that's a present uh, consequence in life opportunity for us. And we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for joining us, everyone. As always, if you have questions, send them in to questions at afjministry.com or um, put them on the, the podcast. There's a link. You can certainly send them in there as well and have a great day. Yep. We'll see you soon. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.